to another video. I know it's been like, uh, I want to say a month since I posted anything or even filmed anything. It's been a really long month, chaotic, all kinds going on. So this video is just to catch you guys up to what's been happening and where we are and why I haven't been very active on social media <laughs> this past few weeks. So, first we're going to just start off let you guys know why I might not be stable right now. It's because I'm not currently on my birthing ball. Uh, it's just the most, one of the most comfortable places for me to sit right now. So, there's a lot to catch you up on, uh, but probably the most, like the biggest eventful thing is this blasted padromal labor. So if you don't know what prodromal labor is, it is labor that starts, progresses like normal labor, and then for whatever reason, just stops. Cold turkey, labor doesn't happen, and it can do that for anywhere from a few days to a few weeks, or in my case, a month or more. <laughs> uh, and let's say I have definitely experienced this before. I had it my first pregnancy with Bruce. I had it for from like 37 weeks on with him and he was born at 40, almost 42 weeks, well, 41 weeks in, in two days. Um, and I have been having it since, I say late December, beginning of January. Long, not fun padromal labor. Um, I've had been to labor and delivery three times in the past month, thinking this is it, it's happening, just to be told, well, yes, you're having contractions, but no, they aren't changing your cervix or doing anything. You're not in labor, which is very, very disappointing. Um. Hey guys, editing Diane jumping in here real quick. Please excuse my husband's Power Rangers figures in the background. Um, I did want to clarify uh, what I meant by disappointing here. Obviously, I was 34 weeks. I did not want to have a baby at 34 weeks. But, because that would have been preterm, and you want baby to be full term and healthy. But um, over the entirety of the month, as I've come from 34 to 38 weeks, and now I am full term, it's just kind of been time after time going back to labor and delivery to just be told the same thing, you're not progressing, these contractions aren't doing anything, has just become very, I guess, emotionally heavy. And just, it's made me not want to go back to labor and delivery for anything. I even joked after the last time we left, telling my husband that uh, I'm, I'm going to end up having this baby home because I'm not going to believe what my body is doing. <laughs> um, obviously, that's, that's not going to be the way it is. But, yeah, so I just wanted to clarify that. I wasn't disappointed to not be having a baby in that moment. I just, because it would have been preterm, but just progressively, it's been very heavy emotionally throughout the month. The first one actually happened that I really, I think I remember, remember, was on Bruce's birthday on January 7th. We ended up in labor and delivery because I was having regular consistent building contractions that um, definitely felt like they were going somewhere. They actually got to the point where I couldn't, like I couldn't sit on my bum comfortably and I was like moaning and breathing, deeply breathing through them and just, you know, all the, it was, it was a really good trial run for actual labor. It definitely felt like active labor. And I get there and they tell me, no, there's no change. You're definitely having the contractions. Because they were so intense, they did keep me, they want to keep me for an hour to drink some plenty of fluids and try to like stop them off that way. See if they were changing anything. Because at that time, I was only, I think it was 35 weeks and something. I think it was like 35 weeks. I think 35 or 36. No, I wasn't quite 36 weeks, I don't think. I don't think I was quite 36 weeks. Uh, I'd have to look at my baby calendar to remember, but either way, it would have been preterm labor. Uh, and so I drank plenty of fluids. I was quite hydrated. 
nothing seemed to be changing. Uh, the contractions kept going. And they actually found, they did several different tests, and they actually found that I had a UTI, which apparently a UTI can stimulate labor-like contractions. I had no idea I had a UTI. I've had several in my life, so I, I know what they feel like. They're not fun at all. But I guess because I was having contractions, I didn't even notice, like, any pain with when I urinated or anything. Like, completely just took me by surprise. So I actually ended up getting admitted so that they could um, administer the steroid shots in case she did show up and also put me on an antibiotic to get rid of the UTI. So we ended up being there for 24 hours. Um, and in that time I did get both the steroid shots. Uh, I did not end up going into labor as I'm sure you saw clearly I'm still very pregnant and we can show you the bump shot and all that <laughs> uh, right now. So obviously I did not have the baby that night. Uh, but what did make that experience, oh, so much more fun was in fact that the day before Bruce had gotten sick, or maybe it was even the day of, the day we went in, Bruce had woke up sick with a stomach bug, throwing up. He was a very sick little boy, crying, weepy, uh, and it, just, it was like a stomach virus. And uh, he, by the time we left and the kids were with my mom, he seemed to be starting to feel better. But around, so we were admitted probably around like 9, 10 p.m. And by 3 a.m., I was throwing up. And I had definitely had clear signs of the stomach virus. Nauseous constantly, or nauseous and throwing up constantly. I couldn't keep anything down, so they had me on IV fluids. It was not fun at all. And... So between the UTI and now the stomach virus, the, my uter like uh, the contractions did not stop. They were continuous. They were constant. Uh, but her, her, she was fine. Baby girl was fine. Her heart rate wasn't, um, didn't seem to be in any danger. Or didn't it seemed to be just fine. She didn't seem to be in any danger. So, um, they just kept me on IV fluids, kept me on the antibiotic, uh, they were giving me anti-nausea medication, so I'd stop throwing up, um, but it, it didn't work. This literally was like the most horrendous feeling stomach bug I have ever had, or stomach virus. It was horrible. I was like in so much pain. Like just, well, nausea, I guess not so much pain, but nausea, but pain was more from the contractions that were being aggravated by it because of course vomiting does not help contractions slow down it actually helps them increase so that yeah that was not fun um so about i think sometime in the middle of the night they came in to have me sign all the consent forms for feedback and for cesarean in case that she had to be born um, or in case all these contractions did lead to her being born and which obviously said they did not, but it was getting a little bit scary because they were talking about if the contractions did not stop, if they could not get them to stop, they may have to they may have to deliver her via cesarean for my safety because contracting that regularly and that consistently on a scar and it's not producing any cervical change is just stressing the scar and it can definitely increase the risk of uterine rupture if you're laboring without actually being in labor. So that was a little scary. And I remember she came in, the nurse came in around 5 a.m. Anthony was asleep, so I had to have this conversation with her by myself. And it was not fun at all. I ended up just in complete tears because I do not want another cesarean if I don't have to have one. And I certainly didn't want one when I was feeling that way, throwing up constantly, just, I, like, I literally sat there and I feared, like, how am I going to keep from throwing up while they're operating on me? Like, it is, like, the scariest thing. I was like, they're going to have to knock me out to keep me from throwing up. <laughs> like, I don't even know if that would work, but it was, it was just bad all around, and I ended up waking Anthony up to talk to him after the nurse left because I was so upset, and it just, it was just all around not fun. Um, 
and then I don't remember around what time Anthony started, I think it was like 9 or 10 a.m., Anthony started showing signs of the stomach bug too, and he started throwing up like crazy they, in this hospital room. And at this point, it's just like, we are, oh man, it was bad. We're both sick, and now they're talking, and that by that point, they're talking about having him leave because he has a communicable virus on the maternity ward. It's not a place where he can be treated. Uh, see, he's not a woman in labor, or not a you know a pregnant woman, <laughs> um, and they don't want someone sick with a virus like that on the maternity ward, who's not there and, you know, for maternity reasons. Uh, so that was scary. <laughs> uh, but he ended up, he did it, he did continue vomiting throughout the day, same as me, but um, he did end up sleeping for a good portion of it, so as long as he was quiet, it seemed to be okay. He did not end up having to leave uh, until I was discharged later that evening. But he, you know, I got through the worst of it during the day, and I was feeling better by the time we did get discharged that evening. But he was still in the thick of it when we got discharged, and I actually ended up having to drive home uh, because he, the, the nausea he was having, he could not deal with the drive, deal with driving. Um, so that was just overall not a fun hospital stay. Um, the contractions did end up subsiding once the stomach bug passed and I started feeling better and so then we got home it was probably around 10 or 11 at night uh, my mom of course was here with the kids and she ended up spending the night uh, just because it was it was late when we got back finally got back home uh, but then of course oh so lovely by the next morning she and Nina both had this stomach virus. It just, it was a bad weekend overall. And I said that was Bruce's birthday weekend. So, so not fun. <laughs> not a fun way for that little boy to spend his birthday. Um, but yeah, so moving on uh, from that. That was that weekend and that, that was just not fun. And then the following weekend, I think it was the following weekend. There was at least one more time. I know I'm, I'm forgetting the details of one other time we were in labor and delivery for regular contractions that ended up being a false alarm again. I don't remember what that, how, how if that was before or after that Bruce's birthday incident. I was not taking notes in my pregnancy brain right now. Um, but there was another time it was my mom ended up coming down. Um, it was, we were actually in and out of the hospital very quickly in and discharged. Uh, because I was not dilating. But then the most recent time, which was two weeks, to two or a week and a half, two weeks ago, uh, I actually thought my water had broken. Um, I was leaking a lot of fluid, and it, I mean, I had just emptied my bladder when it happened, so I was stand, I literally stood up from the toilet when it happened, and whatever it was, went down the inside of my legs it felt like water it looked like water it was clear so I thought my water had broken um so I ended up calling my mom because uh, I'm a VBAC or attempting TOLAC trial of labor after cesarean they wanted me to come in right away to have it checked out uh at that point, the, uh, normally one of the midwives from the practice I see is on call, but at this point she was attending a delivery, so I had to see one of the hospital doctors, and it was just very in and out. She was, she was kind of very in and out, very, I, I don't know, I just, I didn't get a good feeling. She didn't really explain, like, I didn't feel like she was explaining everything very well. Uh, basically, it was, no, your water's not broken. They did four different tests. We can't find any evidence of it. We did, can't tell you what it was that you saw, so other than it might have been pee, and I'm like, it wasn't yellow. It was clear. I know it was clear. Like, I mopped it up off the floor with some toilet paper to make sure it wasn't yellow, because that was my first thought, too. And it was way too liquidy to be just plain discharge, so... At this point, I don't know what it was, if maybe I had an amniotic leak for a little bit. Um, you know, maybe some leaked out. I, I don't I don't know. I really feel like I never got a good 
explanation or there was there's no real way to tell what that was um but it wasn't amniotic fluid apparently and they did an ultrasound to confirm baby still had enough fluid and she did uh, and this was now i remember this was 36 weeks and six days it was a saturday night it was the night before i turned 37 weeks so i was almost full term I was you know, full term at that point. So that was a week and a half ago. Um, but yeah, it was just, it felt very in and out with that doctor. And then she did the ultrasound. Yeah, baby has plenty of fluids. You can go home. It just felt very short and I would have much preferred <laughs> it been one of my midwives. There's so much, I don't know, it just seems so much more warm. And then I never feel like they're short with me, so... I don't know. That's how it felt, at least. And I have not been back to labor and delivery since, although I have had other bouts of contractions that ended up feeling like they were leading towards labor and then didn't. And even right now, I have been having, today, I've been having fairly regular contractions anywhere from 5 to 15 minutes apart since about 5 a.m., and I believe it's around 10.30 a.m. now. Uh, so I don't know if this is going to head to labor or if this is more prodromal labor. And yes, I've had a couple just sitting here filming this. In fact, I'm pretty sure one is coming on now. Alright, that's a fairly good intensity one. Okay, still finishing out. I want to sit here and be all excited about these, but in all honesty, I have had these kind of contractions where I have to stop and breathe through increasing intensity <sighs> so much before recently that has not led to labor that I'm just not sure if I'm ready to be excited about it or not. But at the same time, I'm trying to keep the oxytocin flowing so that they do lead to labor. So we'll see. Oh, oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Whoo. Okay, that was unexpected. I guess it was all the mm, movement. Okay, I lift my arms up like that and I get lightning crotch. That's so much fun. Yeah, I do that and I, it's giving me lightning pain. Okay, it's probably because I contracted on the ball. But I mean, that's probably a good thing. Because if I'm feeling it straight down my nether regions, it might just, you know, be working towards dilation. Alright, so I think the contraction's over now. Back to where we were with, oh yeah, the episode with my water breaking, not breaking, that I'm still just really confused about what it could have been. Uh, if you've had anything like that happen before, please, you know, like, let me know if you have any like idea of what that might be. I was was literally so confused because the liquid was clear. It did not look or smell like pee, but that's what they kept telling me is I must have peed myself. So mm, frustrating. Uh, either way, today is currently I think it's January twenty seventh. I am thirty eight weeks and five days. I believe it's Friday. 38 weeks and five days today so you know it'd be, it'd be great timing if this does turn into labor and she does end up showing up today or tomorrow that would be amazing uh, but you know we'll just have to wait and see what time brings that's pretty much where we've been and I've been trying to finish up work going as far as I can without too much damage at work. <laughs> um, I did end up, I was scheduled to work today, but because of these contractions, I did end up calling out. And I think, uh, either way, I think it's, I'm just going to end up starting my leave after this, whether this leads to labor or not. Because this is not the first time I've had to call out because of contractions that ended up going nowhere. It's, I'm almost 30, I'm almost, I am full term now, I'm almost 39 weeks. I was hoping to go to the end of the work week, but 
I also don't want to keep calling out and inconveniencing everyone else, so it might just be just as well if I just start my leave now, as opposed to in a few days. It's just the difference of a few days, so. And it might be a little less stress on my nerves, because it was giving me a lot of anxiety. It does give me a lot of anxiety when I'm like, I don't want, like, I don't want to inconvenience them by calling out, but at the same time, I don't want to be there if active labor starts. I'd much rather be at home with my family. Or well, right now I'm alone. But <laughs> I'd much rather be at home uh, when that happens. So I just, one less worry. Um, so that is where I've been this past month. Uh, just in all the ups and downs and ins and outs of Padroma labor. Uh, lots of mood swings that have come along with that, like moodiness leading up to it. Um, emotion, just emotions, just that feeling of being complete, so completely pregnant. It's just, oh, it's so frustrating. Um, well, not frustrating being pregnant. The frustrating part has been more on the work side. <laughs> and that's, that's a whole different story. I'm not going to go into too much detail on that. Uh, but another reason why I think it's, it's just time. Like, it's probably just time. Either way, it's just time to finish work and be done uh, with that for now and just come back once babies arrived and I've had my time all right so that was really weird uh, and I started to have a phone call coming in from someone who hasn't called me in years uh, literally since before COVID um, but I think they must have butt dialed me because yeah either way back to where I was Anyway, thinking that it's it's probably time that I just bow out gracefully from work and just focus on baby and family. Hopefully, this the next video you see will be about you will be my I'm in labor video. I hope, but uh, we'll see. I'll post that as soon as I'm not gonna say as soon as we're going to the hospital because I've been to the hospital and back a few times. I would rather post that once I'm at the hospital. <laughs> like I'm already, like I'm getting admitted kind of thing and we know baby's coming. Like for sure, for sure no baby's coming. Um, so yeah, hopefully that will be the next video and until then or the, whatever the next one is, we'll see you guys then. Love y'all, thanks. Hi. All right, so I was just editing it and realized I forgot to film a bump shot. Um, hopefully one of the last ones, but we'll see. So let's go ahead and show you guys how big this 38 week belly is. Let's see here. It's a pretty decent size. Whew, I think fairly Similar to how it was with Bruce right at the end. It's a big belly. Big old bump. Big girl in there. <laughs> Alright, so, yeah. Belly button's all completely flat. Uh, she's definitely dropped. I forgot to mention that in the update video. She's much lower than she was before. You can kind of see that downward tilt. She is like all the way down here now. I don't even feel her up here anymore. She's like all the way down here. So another reason I am hoping is a good sign that this might be labor. All right. So I just want to throw that on here at the end. See you guys later.